Hey, what's going on dudes and dudettes? I am the Mystical Green Beanie, and in today's video I'm going to list off my top 5 favorite female characters in Star Wars because it seems that if you say you don't like Rey or Rose Tico, you are labeled by the internet as a sexist, misogynist monster who just hate seeing strong women in Star Wars. And I can't speak for everybody, but I think I stand with the solid majority of Star Wars fans when I say that I don't hate seeing strong women in Star Wars. I hate seeing poorly written characters in Star Wars, whether they be male, female, or anything in between. Y you know, it's almost as if I'm a Star Wars fan who likes seeing well-written and well-rounded characters in this universe that I care about. Nah, I'm just a sexist, misogynist monster who hates seeing strong women in my Star Wars. Then there's only one thing that women in modern society needs to do, and that is... Get back in the kitchen! But seriously, here are my top five favorite female characters in Star Wars. Number five, Hera Syndulla. Alright, so I am not the biggest fan of Star Wars Rebels. It's not a bad show, and it's especially not the worst show coming out from Disney right now. Yes! He's done it! Spider wins the gold! He... Especially when compared to its predecessor, Clone Wars, which I think was worked on by the same creative team. But regardless of my feelings on the show overall, General Syndulla is a really fascinating character. She's one of those characters that was born and raised in the era of the Republic and the Clone Wars, but she grew into adulthood during the age of the Empire. And I always find these characters so fascinating because they were there. They witnessed the fall of the Galactic Republic firsthand and the rise of the Empire under the rule of Darth Sidious. And because of that, you know exactly what they're fighting for and why they're fighting for it. Also, Hera's just a great character. She's a runaway who abandoned her father who was a radical who couldn't see the bigger picture, so she left him for the rebellion. So we have this character who was born of war and conflict, and in the end doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life during peacetime because for the majority of her life, she hasn't known what peace was. And that's why I think she's such a great and interesting addition to the Star Wars landscape. Number 4, Gianna Solo. Now, I've been very vocal about how much I love the original Star Wars Expanded Universe, especially the legacy characters. So Rey, I mean, uh, Jaina Solo, is fantastic. She's the daughter of the famous Han Solo and Leia Organa, and she's not only one of the Jedi Knights and later masters of the new Jedi Order that was established by Luke Skywalker, but she was also an exceptional pilot in Rogue Squadron. Plus, she was a hero of the Yuuzhan Vong War. But aside from all that, She's just a really cool, down-to-earth person who had to sacrifice a lot in the face of war. She lost her little brother Anakin, which almost pushed her to the dark side. Unfortunately, her brother Kylo Ren, I mean Darth Kytus, fell completely, and after killing one of the greatest Star Wars characters of all time, don't worry, I'm gonna get to her in a second, Jaina was forced to confront and kill her brother. Also, did I mention that she was trained by Boba Fett? Because she was trained by Boba Fett. Seriously, if that doesn't give her cool points in your arbitrary book of coolness... Well then you are lost! Number 3, Shock T. Jedi Master Shock T is probably the ideal Jedi Master that people are thinking of when they refer to the Jedi Masters of the Old Republic. She was a powerful Force user, but didn't feel the need to overuse or display her power. Instead, she was a peacemaker and a natural teacher. Plus, if we're just throwing out cool points for the sake of throwing out cool points, well then, she not only survived the Battle of Geonosis, but not just one, but two encounters with General Grievous, as well as Order 66, making her one of the very few survivors of the Great Jedi Purge, until she dies on Felucia after a battle with Darth Vader's apprentice, Starkiller. And yes, I am very well aware of the fact that Jedi Master Shock T is more or less the Kitty McCormick of Star Wars because she has so many deaths. We'll go with the one from The Force Unleashed because I love that game. Number two, Leia Organa. So this one feels like a no-brainer. 
I mean, the original trilogy alone proves my point in how awesome she is. She's the last surviving citizen of Alderaan. She's a fearless rebel spy. She fights for the rebellion in the face of the death of her culture and people. And she's one of the few public enemies and traitors of the Empire to see Darth Vader more than once and live. But beyond the films and in the original Star Wars Expanded Universe, Leia is not just in tune with the Force, but decades after the events of Return of the Jedi, after Luke establishes a brand new order, Leia starts her training to become a Jedi Knight, which she does around the time of the Second Galactic Civil War. But all that said, Leia is just an amazing person, and she's a truly inspiring character because whether it be in the films or the Expanded Universe, She's always suffering a great loss, and no matter the pain or the suffering that she's going through, she always finds a way to manage it and muscle through and find hope. And I know that sounds corny, but I'm a Superman fan. What were you expecting? And before anyone says, why ain't she number one on your list? I love Leia, she's great but she just narrowly falls short of being my number one pick, which leads me to number one, Mara Jade Skywalker. So I know this is a video where I'm listing off my top five favorite female characters in Star Wars, but honestly, Mara Jade's probably one of my favorite Star Wars characters in general. Homegirl went from being one of the Emperor's hands and assassinating people who the Emperor needed to get lost or get quiet to being one of the most powerful and prominent figures in the New Jedi Order. But this wasn't one of those light bulb moments that happens where the character says, Oh wow, the Empire might be bad. I should probably stop working for them. I mean, not that that ever happens in Star Wars anyway. <laughs> What I love about Mara Jade is that the Emperor was her master, and she had such a deep-seated respect for him. So when Luke and Vader killed the Emperor, and he called out to her one last time, giving her one final mission through the Force, that she must kill Luke Skywalker, she made it her mission to kill this one random farm boy terrorist. But once she found him, he was so nice and calm and inviting, and Luke. <laughs> but even after he would risk his life to save hers on a couple of occasions, she would still make it very clear that in the end, she was going to kill him. And technically she does, after she kills one of his clones, and they save the galaxy, and they become friends, and then they get married later on. Okay, actually there's a lot in between them being friends and then getting married, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna say that's how it went down. But what I love about her so much is that her transition to the light side was not smooth sailing. She was a ruthless assassin who was more or less one of the many bullets in the proverbial gun that Darth Sidious pointed at his enemies, and it took a lot to get Mara to break free from his control over her after his death, and that is why I love her as a character so much. Anyways, those are my top 5 favorite female characters in Star Wars, but what about you? Who's on your list? Let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button, share, support the channel, and if you want to see more content like this, all you have to do is subscribe. I'm the Mystical Green Beanie. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, adios nachos, adios.